Welcome to the Comlex Board Review. Today's lecture is focused on the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system. And this is again a very high yield topic, but in order to understand the typical cases that the Comlex presents, it's important to first look at some of the anatomy. You know, most Comlex questions will test you on which structures receive innervation from the vagus versus the pelvic splanchnic nerves. Um, in the parasympathetic nervous system, um, you have to remember that the nerves outflow tract are either in the sacral region or over here in the cranial parasympathetic outflow region, whereas the sympathetic is generally thoracolumbar. And so immediately, you know, you're, when you're looking at an organ with parasympathetic innervation, you're going to be looking at um, a specific region. It's either the sacral region or the cranial region. Now, Here's an easy way to distinguish between whether the innervation is from the vagus nerve or it's from another nerve. All viscera above the diaphragm is vagus nerve innervation. Okay? Below the diaphragm, there are three main organs. One's the GI system, and in that, the entire small intestine is the vagus nerve. The large intestine, there's four sections of the large intestine, ascending, transverse, descending and the rectosigmoid. You want to divide the large intestine in half. So the proximal half, which is the ascending and the transverse, is the vagus. And the distal half, which is the descending and the rectosigmoid, is pelvic splanchnic nerve. Okay, so again, one more time. The ascending and transverse is vagus, and the descending and rectosigmoid is pelvic splanchnic nerve. Entire small intestine is vagus nerve. Now in the GU, genital urinary system, there are three major structures, the kidneys, the ureters, and the bladder, okay? And here, what you want to do is think of it as the proximal half, which is the kidneys and the upper ureter, which is innervated by the vagus nerve. And um, after that, the distal half is the lower ureter and the bladder, okay? So the bladder and the lower ureter are the pelvic splanchnic nerve. And so this way, if you divide it based on certain sections, a proximal half and a distal half, you will have no problem answering questions on the exam. Also, in the reproductive system, the ovaries and the testes descend from a higher region in the posterior abdominal wall, and therefore their innervations are from the vagus nerve. Okay. So the, any question dealing with the ovaries and the testes on the complex exam, you should immediately think of the vagus nerve. All other reproductive structures are innervated by the pelvic splanchnic nerve. Now, this diagram is really important to know because there are ganglions in the parasympathetic nervous system here where you should focus your attention to when answering questions. Cranial nerve 3, um, which originates in the midbrain, um, goes to the cilia ciliary ganglion, which again affects the pupils. Okay. Um, and so that's an important um, association to understand. Cranial nerve 7, which originates from the pons, goes to the sphenopalatine ganglion, okay? And this innervates the lacrimal and the nasal glands here. Cranial nerve 7 also innervates the submandibular ganglion here, which goes and innervates the submandibular and sublingual glands, okay? Right here. Whoops. Now, let's go back here. Good. Uh, cranial nerve 9, which originates from the medulla, um, goes to the otic ganglion, okay, right here, and that innervates the parotid gland, right here. So, cranial nerve 9, otic ganglion to the parotid gland. And again, vagus nerve originates from the medulla, and it's going to innervate several structures. The heart, the bronchial tree here, the esophagus, lower two-thirds, stomach, small intestine, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, um, and we had talked about earlier the kidney and the upper ureter, the ovaries and the testes, and the ascending and the transverse colon. Okay, so that's a review of the visceral innervation of the parasympathetic nervous system. Again, here's another same review, and what you want to look understand is the actions of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system are obviously different. And so on the complex exam, um, depending on 
what the question is talking about. For example, if there's increased peristalsis um, of organs in the upper, middle, and lower GI, you know that it's parasympathetic. And so you're going to answer another, uh, uh, the vagus nerve, you know, as your answer. Whereas if you were in the uh, sympathetic nervous system where you had, um, let's say, a question dealing with the um, stomach and it was sympathetic, then you're looking at different nerves innervation right there, like the greater splanchnic nerve and the regions would be T5 to T9 for the stomach. And there would be decreased peristalsis. And so when you're answering questions, pay attention not only to the actions, but also to the impingement sites, the ganglia, the organs, and, and its innervation in the spinal cord. Again, here's a review of the pelvic splanchnic nerve. And um, just so you have a good review overall for the pelvic splanchnic nerves, the key words are lower ureters and bladder, uterus, prostate, and genitalia, and descending sigmoid colon and the rectum. Okay, so usually, you know, the lower ureters, bladder, and so if you have a question about the bladder, you're thinking about pelvic splanchnic, and also about the rectum, you're thinking about pelvic splanchnic. The ovaries and the testes originate um, a little bit higher, and so they're innervated from the vagus nerve, okay? Um, if there's a question about a person with low back pain, um, positive, you know, high PSA level, you're thinking about you know, prostate cancer type of a scenario or BPH, then, you know, it's going to be pelvic splanchnic. And so it's very common to put in scenarios talking about, um, you know, uterine pathology, prostate pathology, or, um, you know, rectal bladder pathology, and having you ask a simple question, you know, is this pelvic splanchnic or is this vagus nerve? And that's going to give you a lot of points on the complex. Here's our references. And again, visit www.comlexflashcards.com for even more lectures um, and mnemonics and case studies as you prepare for the complex. We wish you all the best.